right. Let's get cracking. Yeah, man, I'm ready. So, this is Dan Tiernan. Hello. Can I say hello for the for the listeners? Hello. Yeah, so they know what you sound like. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, this is what I sound like. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dan's Dan's from Manchester. We're not recording in Manchester. That's weird, isn't it? I thought you were gonna say we're not recording now. I said, <laughs> well, what was the fucking point? <laughs> yeah, we're both from Manchester, but really we've met in our spiritual home, which is Haywood Heath, <laughs> uh, <laughs> down south in a, to- in a in a little Tory town. Recording. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a, uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've known Dan for a while, and thanks for coming on. First thanks of so all, thanks for having me. Appreciate I'm very it. Very excited. Yeah. So do you know the format of of what we do? It's basically like, you know, you know, I used to be an archaeologist before yeah. I was a comedian, and you just pick something that you're interested in from history. I research it, and then we basically just chat shit about yeah, it for that, an hour that's or so. Good. All right. That's what I signed up for. Dead casual. Yeah. You don't need to know anything. All right. That's just I know you're well. interested in it. We'll, we'll get into that. But you don't need to have any knowledge or anything. So don't feel like you have to try and be smart. All right. Thanks. I know you are smart. Is, this, is there like a bit in the format where there's like you put the your guest at ease? Is that what's happening now? I feel it's like. just because I think people are like... <laughs> I think when you when I tell when I ask people to come on, sometimes they're like, they assume like they have to n- tell me about the thing. Yeah, sure. Because like, I'm well, like, you pick something. Sure. Which would be ridiculous when it like do you want to come and do yeah, this podcast and where you, you do all the research. Them, you as a trained archaeologist, t- just telling them why they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, actually, uh, <laughs> actually, you idiot. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you just come on and I call you an idiot for yeah, an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Have no, but it's, it's not that. Uh, <laughs> but um, if you do know anything, feel free to add it in and stuff. But yeah, you don't have to. Um, right. And what what have you picked for your thing? So when I was 12, uh, I was a magician. Uh, and I've always been quite interested in magic. But like, yeah, so I've chosen the history of magic, Khaled. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know a lot about it, to be honest with you. But I do think it's fascinating because particularly as now, it's sort of seen as just like quite a nerdy kind of attention seeking. Like back in the day, at times it was taken like incredibly seriously, wasn't yeah. it? And people yeah. were like, it was like quite a dark like art form. And then, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, it's gone through like phases, like a lot of things. It's gone through like phases of like what people think about it. Yeah. Well, it used to be like kind of science, like magic and science. Mm, there was yeah, a huge crossover. Yeah. Go through a phase of that. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting as well. Cause we're going to talk about the history of it through all these different like people and kind of like societies and each, what they think of it is a reflection of like what their beliefs are and stuff. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not like magic is, has its own thing. It's basically magic is always this thing. And then what people think about it depends on their society. Like the culture. Yeah, exactly. Like the culture. And then they interpret it through their culture, if that makes sense. Mm. And it's so even though we're going to talk about magic, you actually you actually learn about those people as well through the way that they look at magic. Like where they were at and the way they saw the world. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, How they see the world. Because I guess the magician would frame it in the way that would give it the most traction. So Mm. and that would depend on the culture like, yeah 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 and sometimes that like, they do it as science sometimes as supernatural sometimes as like a show or what exactly yeah. yeah and when i was researching this i did find there's a definite like arc of like mm. the inter- like how it's seen and stuff and how it changes over time sure and, like you're like oh that makes that makes loads of sense actually from what i because the thing is as well that like, i knew when i was researching this i knew about most of these societies yeah as an archaeologist and like yeah. historically and then when I was learning about magic within those societies, it was like, oh yeah, this makes complete sense. This wow, is how they would view out, it. Seeing yeah, it like this, that, yeah, obviously uh, this is how they would see it. <laughs> that's like, it's really cool. So yeah, I really uh, enjoyed like looking at this one. So I'm looking forward to the examples. Hopefully, hopefully of that, yeah, yeah, hopefully you, you might be like, fucking, oh, I hate that I put this. It's boring. <laughs> yeah, whoa, I chose magic. I don't want to know about religion. I should have done pirates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so I'm going to start kind of at the beginning and the, or the beginning as we know it. Yeah. We don't know what's, there's obviously times where we don't have any information and that. So we can't sure. talk about that. When is, when is the beginning? I'm interested. So to the earliest what? that I could kind of come up with something where I'm like, maybe that's what we're talking. So I've kind of focused as well, I should say on like performance magic. Sure. You know, like magicians as we know them, not really. Obviously it, it blends in with like the idea of like real magic and stuff. Yeah. 
but I've kind of more focused on like, how does that relate to like what we think of as like a magician? Sure, because I imagine people were using methods, like magic methods yeah. for loads of other reasons previously yeah. and to trick people or not necessarily doing magic. Yeah, exactly. And if you go into just magic, yeah. As a concept, like there's no way you can do that in one podcast. Yeah, because like, be people like... will have been. I think people will have been doing magic tricks really since the start of time. I would imagine. You think, or don't you? Like I can imagine in a cave, just trying to like get a stone and make a stone trying to look hide like... something from someone. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. and like make it look like it had disappeared. Yeah, so it feels I guess like quite a natural thing. Someone's worked it out how to do it. Yeah, yeah. But I guess what we're talking about is like when do we see it like recorded as like a thing that people almost can learn how to do sure so i think is that like 18 like eight, eight, are you going in well nah, earlier? way earlier than that okay way, okay way okay earlier because there was a guy called something who dan or something like who that done. yeah he's french uh, french yeah, guy and that was like 18 yeah so or... he 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 came, he came up he's um so he's credited with basically founding the idea of like the modern magician yeah who's not like a mystic yeah. Who's like a performance when man. It's, when he's being basically honest that he's lying to them. Yeah. That's but the then, difference. But yeah. then everything I've seen says that's probably not true. It's just that's uh. from his autobiography that he wrote himself. Uh. And he basically, in his in his, in his his autobiography, he said, I'm the, I'm the boy. Yeah. <laughs> then people took it, I'm the boy. <laughs> I it's invented like, all of this. <laughs> I do think though that like, all right, that's interesting. Because I think maybe... He must have been one of the people to first do performance magic so really well, well, well th and glamorize it and make other people think. So yeah, so it can't people, just be that he say, was like, "I'm great." Because hundred percent, yeah. People say that he basically, uh, what's the word where you like exaggerated? Yeah, his role, embellished. His but role. he was still like a pioneer in yeah, that, yeah, regardless yeah, yeah. of whether he's the one guy who invented yeah, it. Yeah, but like, he was basically saying it's just me. Yeah, and he's famous as well because uh, Houdini is yeah. na he named him. Houdini's not called Houdini. Named himself after Houdini. Named after him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So in French, it's how like, did I not make that like, connection? So it's pronounced, <laughs> apologies for my French, but it's like Udan or something like in French. Udan. It's like, but it's spelled if we say it in English, it looks like Houdin, and yeah. then it's Houdini is named after named himself after him because Houdini's got like something vice or something like he's, oh, he's not. Um, so the earliest reference I could find where you could be like possibly is uh, ancient Egypt. Yeah. So in ancient Egypt, uh, magic is very much like this kind of, they think it's real. It's used mm -hmm. in like religious stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, like the, they do like spells if you're like sick and things like that. But then we have this this papyrus um, called the Westcar Papyrus. And it's basically, it's a story, it's from uh, 3,000, about three and a half thousand years ago. But it's telling older stories, if that makes sense. So the stories it's telling are from four and a half thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. So the, for they're writing about history. In wow. That. Um, it's and their it, textbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it tells a story about a pharaoh called uh, Khufu. And basically his sons told him five different stories. And they're all about like magic and sorcery and stuff. And two of them kind of sound a bit like magicians, kind of. Mm -hmm. So one of them is a magic trick that we know, but we don't know if he's actually done it. So it's he talk, they talk about him chopping the head off animals and reattaching them. Right. Which That's is a magic trick. Yeah, that is a magic People do it with chickens, yeah, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. Like, like an old school. Doves and yeah, stuff. It's like old, yeah, doves, yeah, yeah. Yes. Pull the head off Did and reattach it. Did they say what it. animals it was? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So he starts off with like small. Uh, so like, I think these three, I can't remember one of them. I didn't write it down. Because I don't believe that back then, I think if he... That I don't believe that they would be able to accurately put like a pig's head back on. Yeah, that feels so, like too much of a technical. And trick. this is the thing. So they start off with like a waterfowl, like a little bird, which is you know that's kind of similar to what they do now. Yeah. But then they say he does it with like an ox, I think it was, or something like that, yeah, like a big yeah. animal. And like, I'm not. Yeah, obviously you're not going to chop an ox's head off and re yeah reattach it. He could have done it in a way, like he could have made it. That make often what people think they saw in magic isn't what they actually saw, like a stage illusion, yeah, kind of thing. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he somehow, yeah, okay, so that's kind of like that. One of the other stories is this guy who makes a wax crocodile uh -huh. and then turns it into a real crocodile. Uh -huh. Which I saw that and I was like, oh, that could be a trick. But then actually when I read the full thing, it was basically like, um, <laughs> it's a wax crocodile and someone's, um, wife was cheating on him oh my god and the guy the guy who the guy <laughs> who was yeah, the guy who was banging the guy's wife yeah, yeah he put this wax crocodile in the river where he like sneaked out of the house right and then when he snuck out the wax crocodile became real 
and uh, pulled him down to the bottom of the river. And then the wife comes out and they've basically, they let the guy back up. He confesses. Uh -huh. And then they burn the wife and throw her in the river. <laughs> so it's like, this oh, is... so the wax crocodile was there to trick him. Yeah, the so wax crocodile. So he thought it was a real crocodile. No, the, no it turns into a real one. <laughs> but, but that, that, I don't know why they didn't just get a real crocodile. Yeah, how did yeah. it turn into a real one? In what, When you put it in the water, it turns into a real crocodile. You know, like those little things you used to get when you was a kid. Right. The little, and like grow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's water. still not a real crocodile. <laughs> yeah, is yeah, it? yeah. So, but no, it turns into a real one. Right. This, we, yeah, but so this one's like, <laughs> this I'm like, this ain't a magic trick. This is like a mag like a sorcerer. Right. Kind so of story. it didn't happen. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but and that's then, what the story is, is that yeah. it's turning. And then there's more there's more stories mm -hmm. and the the like that. So I think I think it's fair to say these the, the West Car Papyrus is just about it's about real magic. Sure. I don't think it's about like yeah. um you know, and they're like writing about contrast. things that are a thousand years yeah, beforehand. Yeah, yeah. And the other stories, I don't even... So it could very be fair that it could all be bollocks, That's right? the other thing yeah, as well, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we're going third hand. Yeah. Sure. We're, we're, this is a story that they're telling mm -hmm. about someone a thousand years earlier telling a story. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's like everyone's just... It's like, you know, five, <laughs> like, removed but stories. I guess it's got to be mentioned because the at some point that could have been some kind of magic trick it's very possible yeah exactly yeah and you can't do a history of magic and not talk about so so the guy who did the the head chopping off and reattaching yeah they say he performed that for the emperor for the wow. uh, pharaoh magician yeah he did it like a like a magic performance yeah. so i think you gotta mention it even if and you don't think I, it's true i do my little bit i know about the ancient egypt so it makes sense that they would be one of the first people doing magic yeah and just because of how like resourceful and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Inventive Very advanced. And, and Greece, ancient Greece gets fascinated by Egyptian magic, basically. Yeah. And that's that's a big driver of what sends it to Greece. Okay. Which is the next stop off. Boom, let's <laughs> go. Us. So like from the same kind of time trip. period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So from the same, same time period, um, you've basically got ancient Greece. And in Greece, you have these two, these two things. You've got high magic. Mm -hmm which is like, you know, priests and priestesses. And I don't know if you heard of like the oracles, yeah. and like like Delphi and all that kind of, yeah. that's like high magic. Yeah. And then you have low magic, okay, which is like dodgy people yeah. doing like dodgy things. Cups and balls and stuff Yeah, like well, not yet. But okay, I'm getting ahead even, of myself. Yeah, you're getting ahead of yourself. But um, things like curses, oh. things like, you know, you basically like you're getting it for like dodgy reasons. Okay. And you go into these like weird people sure. for dodgy reasons. So it's not socially acceptable. Sort yeah, of magic. yeah, yeah. Taboo magic. Yeah, or it's frowned on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the reason I bring that up is because uh, Plato, mm -hmm. you know, you heard of Plato, I'm yeah. sure. He talks about in his writing, he talks about these low magic uh -huh. practitioners and he says he thinks they're faking it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't think it's real magic. So what, what that is, is that's the first reference I can find of someone like directly saying, I think they're doing magic tricks. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's that's saying. that's what he's there. saying. Yeah. Yeah. He's I think it's interesting that that's, they're, they're, they're doing it as a con really for mm. money, aren't they? They're quacks, like. Yes, yeah, so he's saying they want people to believe it's real. Sure. But this is all like the evolution, like until like when they started, people started thinking, well, we could use this for entertainment and yeah. be interested in it. Yeah, yeah, way. yeah. And it's all linked. It's all linked together. Because from... the sheer fact that Plato was like, oh, this is, yeah, this is a trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, it's quite yeah. funny, like. Because yeah, you think of it now like it's so ridiculous, and if you imagine like a like a street magician or something, I'll be like, no, nah, it's real. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 <laughs> it's yeah. So there it's... is though that that did exist. I think it's well, over that, but there was a guy like Chris Angel. I think mm. his name was. Do you remember him? America is like a but he used like to act like it was real. Like, <laughs> like uh, he'd do loads yeah. of really fake stuff with like cuts. Well, and David stuff. Blaine was a bit like that, wasn't he? Yeah, but like, then, people were like, "Is this real?" <laughs> yeah, but Blaine, I think, was so just so good with like cards and slights it almost awarded yeah, yeah, yeah. him to be able to add this kind of spooky yeah but yeah, like yeah. chris angel would just be like he never did this but this would be an example he'd be like and then he'd like just completely disappear and then be on a bus when it's like clearly like a cut or whatever yeah. and then be all <laughs> did you see do you see the david blaine one where, they, where he went to haiti maybe and I they were know. like they were like mate what are you doing here? 
<laughs> they didn't like it. They weren't, they weren't no, into it. No, she not. <laughs> yeah. like you're taking a piss here. Because he did like it. He did like, is this your card? And the guy was like, are you reading my mind? Yeah. Wait, like, started beefing him. <laughs> like, why Get you the fuck yeah, out of my He's mind. like, what are you reading my mind for? You did. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's so true, though, Because like, if you believed it, yeah, yeah, you yeah. would be pissed off, yeah. innit? You'd be like, why are you reading my mind? Don't you do that. That's an invasion of my privacy. <laughs> I've not accepted cookies. Like, <laughs> so yeah, but that's what they're all like back then. Like everyone's like believes it. Like, so if someone went in my mind and the only thing they like revealed was the card I was thinking of, I'd be like, whoa, close call. It's like, yeah, there's much worse things. You could have pulled up there. Give him a wink afterwards. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's why it's kind of like in ancient, ancient Greece and then ancient Rome is the first place where we're like they're doing magic tricks okay we know we know this so there's a group who comes about and we have a reference from seneca the writer mm -hmm. to them and they're called i get this i'll read it off because i get it right it's the aketabulari oh yeah and they're basically a group of people who do the cup and balls oh yeah that's, really? it. that's what they do yeah how are they doing it together do you think or are they doing it sep like on stage separately it's not on stage it's like street got you it's like street perform like not even performance they're like yeah kind of performance but is but that the one let me get this right is it like cups and balls or is it where people bet on a ball because that that was around do you know what I'm talking about yeah, that's got yeah, a name yeah, yeah, but yeah. I've forgotten but it it's the same trick it's, yeah so those yeah. the ones who take the money off people to bet yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's like shells and pearls or yeah, something yeah. like so that they, but it's the same trick it's like the three cups with yeah. the ball. you have to guess which one the ball's in sure but people now do it where you bet but it's the same trick as when you're just doing it as a trick as well yeah sure so i think i'm not sure i have to check but I, I think they're just doing it as a performance yeah okay and like getting paid maybe they're getting like you know like a busker or something yeah, like that yeah 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 um, because i think people do the cups and balls these days and even when they're doing it as a trick they frame it as if it's like a bit of a I bet, you know, like, so, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they make them look stupid yeah, or whatever. Yeah, so you see it. So I feel then. like it must have, that trick must have originated from people doing it as a con or as a, as a game. As far and as that, I can tell, it's not a con. Yeah. It's, it's, maybe it's a game. Yeah, maybe, yeah, Maybe yeah, they yeah. get people to guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously, like, we don't know exactly because the references to it are quite sparse. Mm -hmm. So like, when I say Seneca writes about it, it's literally like one sentence. Sure. And he's talking about them. He's saying this group, they're doing their tricks with the cup and balls. Yeah, like, okay. It's very like vague. But do you know what I mean? trick. Like, was the word trick, do you think? Tricks you... and games, I think it is. Yeah, something, like, okay. something like that. Because um, I think it is considered, magicians always say it's the oldest trick ever. So that yeah. makes sense. So he, yeah, it definitely is. That's, yeah. Well, it's definitely the oldest we know about. Yeah, sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, 100%. yeah. 100%. Yeah. So he says they're doing this and he says they're juggling as well. Nice. So they're obviously doing a bunch of, they're like street okay, performance. Okay, and this is where it's meet, when it meets circus, that's yeah. when it starts to become entertainment yeah, they're yeah, juggling yeah. as well that's what i mean so this, they're entertainers it's they're becoming not just a con feat men. rather than a exactly a stunt and a feat rather than claiming that you're you've got special powers 100 percent, and that's why for me this is this is really the beginning i think so yeah because this is where they're doing it as a performance yeah and they're not saying i'm mystical and magical do you know no, what i mean yeah it's just like yeah like look yeah what I did. how do i do this yeah how you, am i doing that well you, you, know you I mean? tell me they're yeah. not like all oh, the gods have like yeah, blessed me with this sure. fucking ability to make make the ball magically vanish and disappear they're like yeah i'm doing this thing and oh. the fact they're juggling as well so everyone's like oh they're really like dexterous and yeah. quick with their hands yeah. and stuff like that so this is this is the first time where it's like yep that's what we think of like a nice. modern trick, if you like. Uh, they must have been mad people, the people who were in that collective, like yeah. trailblazers. It sounds it sounds like pretty mad. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you're like traveling around, well, you're doing these comics, tricks. It's like... one thing, you know, grinding in an open mic scene when it's been an art form that's been established for hundreds of years, but yeah. well, maybe not that long, but to be to be doing magic in like the the Roman uh, yeah. yeah in ancient Rome yeah so it's fifties AD <laughs> so it's like t almost two thousand years ago this wow. and it's they're the first Probably big ones, risk yeah. someone's just not gonna like it and execute you as well like or, or think <laughs> that it's yeah 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 but that's why I say they're probably not scamming people yeah. Too risky. Yeah, thing. risky. Yeah. Especially in Rome. They'll just, yeah. they'll just kill you. They're not arse. They're not having any you. of that. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm sure they were con artists, but like, yeah. you're a bit, especially the, with the juggling and all that, you're very front and centre, yeah. aren't you? It's clear you're doing a scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so that's the first kind of example of like, where we're like, yep, yeah, they're, they're 
almost like magicians that we think of now, but they're like, yeah, like we say, street performers with the juggling and all that. And they're, they're active from like 50 AD to about 300. So a long time, hundreds of years. What, this collective are? Yeah, So yeah. they're recruiting new people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They it's must like be a, making money then for yeah, it, it must happen be, that long. Yeah, it must almost be like a, like a magic society yeah. kind of thing. Um, maybe magic society is wrong, but like a kind of performer society. Sure. You know, where you're doing this and you're kind of passing it down, passing down the knowledge and the tricks. Do you know if Cups and Balls was the only recorded trick that they did? Yeah, pretty right. much. From the, but there from are these loads ones. of different tricks you can yeah, do. Yeah, but with they're the probably doing other stuff because he does say they're juggling as well. Yeah. And we just don't have... They're probably the, making balls appear and disappear, I would guess. Yeah, we just don't have the info to like yeah. to back to back it up. Do you sure. know what I mean? But I think it's fair to assume they're doing other stuff. That can't be yeah. their whole act. Yeah, <laughs> it's just juggling. Just cuts and balls for four hundred years, <laughs> lads. You'd work. You'd work. We, you maybe mix it up. I mean, I like the cups and balls as much as anyone. Yeah, we think it's bad where you get like these comedians doing the same jokes yeah, after like hacked. ten yeah, years. Yeah, <laughs> and these guys are doing the same cup and well, ball trick after <laughs> three hundred years. Yeah. Well, when was it? Did you see? When did they finish? Or like, like three hundred? Yeah, three hundred. I thought there was a darkness under their eyes where they've been doing it for three hundred years. <laughs> the same trick. <laughs> Do you there was like new people, like alternative, alternatively doing like new tricks? Yeah, they're e- eating the balls and. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we move on to, like the medieval period. Ooh. So first, you get like what what people call the dark ages. Yeah, kind of like you know More casually magic yeah and magic actually kind of goes not goes away but it's you can't just do performance magic in the same way really because it's considered like witchcraft and stuff mm. and people get a lot more really it's the rise of christianity is this in england all over or, Europe. Across Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. And um, they don't, you know, Christians aren't really into magic historically. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't like it. I mean, nowadays, I'm sure they don't mind. But I don't know. <laughs> I know there was a school near where I'm, f- like, uh, I won't name the exact school for legal reasons, but uh, they, uh, <laughs> it was a Church of England school. And mm. one day, I think I knew I had, maybe she got rid of all of the the books on wizardry so all the harry <laughs> potter's gone no like no magic and all of this and i this was when i was a magician Jesus i remember i was a Christ. magician and i was like to my mum like oh i wasn't at the school but and she was like no i think i don't think it's yeah something to do with like magic literature that's so mad yeah crazy right wow she must have been hardcore yeah 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 church of england as well yeah you, you usually yeah. think they don't give a shit no i know there <laughs> you go you expect it from like from like the mall kind of like, like what are they worried about there that like someone's gonna decide they want to be a witch like maybe they just so want to they don't like the words of witchcraft even being talked about uh yeah i don't get it how is harry Potter? yeah because <laughs> surely everyone understands this is fictional yeah like no one's yeah. like <laughs> no one's like well this this proves that god isn't real i guess it's maybe because kids were very obsessed with harry potter weren't they yeah like which meant people would have been dressing up as witches and yeah that kind of thing but even still yeah no it's bonkers it's i'm just so trying to understand mad. where it could have come from because isn't yeah because i mean jesus did magic well, yeah, <laughs> he's bloody good. And yeah, he's it. one of the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did, did, you know what? Because none of those lads are turning the cups and balls into food, were they? Yeah, walk, <laughs> walking on water. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand years before Dynamo did it. Yeah, yeah, the... yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't don't... he turn some bread into some fish? Was that a thing? Yeah, bread into fit water into wine is the water famous into wine. one. Yeah, he's good, ma- good magic. So, do you think then, with your knowledge of history, do you think Jesus was actually doing those tricks? Because could we not argue that the earliest? I always thought that, but I oh, mean, oh no, but this is before. Jesus. This is before. Well, the the these cup and balls aren't, but the Egyptians and the Greeks are. Yeah, yeah. Um, these would be about fifty years after Jesus. Yeah, um, but I mm. think that yeah, but that kind of falls into <laughs> the category that I was talking about. You know, with the Egyptians of like the religious stuff like they mm-hmm. have like the priests and stuff they're doing what yeah. they think is magic it's not entertainment yeah magic. so i put jesus in jesus in with that it's like a record yeah. of magic Got, yeah. in a way unless yeah. you're religious but do you think he was doing tricks yeah i don't know it yeah. does it would make sense wouldn't it that'd yeah. be so funny if that's what it was yeah like, if he was a magician if jesus got, got was just hand. If, yeah if jesus was just doing like street magic imagine he's trying to yeah <laughs> and Pe- people were like his family Whoa. was saying to him like bro this is gonna get out of hand like what if this gets out of hand what if people think you're 
real and they carry on and they think you're like the, the chosen one. <laughs> he said, Dad, you're ridiculous. That'll never happen. <laughs> anyway, look at this bread. Focus on the bread. Next thing, you're nailed to a cross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then he comes back to life. That was his. That was his big. That was That's his a big reveal. Yeah, that was his uh, David Blaine in the box. No, that one's <laughs> impressive. Yeah, <laughs> that was his big stunt. Where he's like these. He's like these. Tr these street tricks aren't enough anymore. I need something yeah, big. I need something big, please, Dad. <laughs> he nailed me to a cross, and then I come out of the cave. I mean, it does. It does track as like he was a magician, and these were all tricks. Yeah, and people just took it too serious. Yeah, I wish. I can kind of see that people would do, can't you, if they'd never seen magic before? <laughs> that would be so funny if Your that's natural conclusion. Because I think we're so desperate to think there's more to life. So Imagine if... I, I think like, as a kid first seeing magic, you almost pray that it's real. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. Exciting. You want it to be real, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Which is why it works, I guess. Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun to pretend that you can do that. I'd right? love it if we got like a technology to bring people back to life mm -hmm. and they brought Jesus back mm -hmm. and he was just like a like David Panicking. he was just like David Blaine he's a magician yeah and he was but fighting. his tricks are like dead old now yeah <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, like they're like his tricks are like because they're yeah, like yeah he's shit like now. doing the fun one yeah. like, <laughs> 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 <That's> one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got your nose I've got your nose <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like what the fuck is this <laughs> yeah bro <laughs> um, so yeah so the medieval period like the dark ages there's not a lot going there's not a lot of records basically all the only references to magic really are like evil magic and stuff do you know what i mean and witches and things like that then in the kind of what we call like the late medieval so like post like 10 hundred yeah or yeah post 1000 like um like post norman conquest basically you mm -hmm. know 1066 and all that um that's when we get records of these like traveling magicians yeah who are like part of they're almost like part of like a circus yeah. traveling circus kind of thing and they're really cool actually because they're they're like all around entertainers uh -huh. so when i was looking into these first of all they're very like marginalized in society they're like yeah. on the fringes of society they're Freaks. traveling around yeah. yeah 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 exactly they've been outcast by society. yeah they're like outcast basically yeah, yeah, yeah. travel entertaining people from town to town or whatever yeah and they do so what i can find about these they do these kind of uh, like maybe like sleight of hand tricks mm. and things like that they also do the juggling and stuff but as they're doing it they're like telling stories and they're telling jokes and things like Boom. that yeah so this is the first time they this is where you're like oh these are like proper performers now yeah um and they're almost like comics yeah because they're like telling stories and telling people jokes and making fun they're doing like crowd work making fun of people and they're and street stuff. performers like a tent kind of thing or like okay. in, just in like a field they'll set yeah. up in like a field or okay. whatever yeah yeah um, so they'll set up on like the edge of the town maybe and then people from the town will come to watch the show like the circus yeah. which kind of still happens a bit and it's mad that people are going to just have their mind blown yeah it's just fun and it's just entertainment yeah. you think back then as well you and that's that. what I mean I feel like back then right now we go and see magic but we all can accept, we all just know that someone can fool us with magic. Mm. But back then it was utterly like, what the hell? Like yeah, it would yeah, change yeah. your existential philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is this is also where I think it turns into like, because I think the thing with here you need to remember is that people are like getting, you know, they're getting messed up for like witchcraft and sorcery and all that. Mm -hmm. So I think they have to differentiate it from that. Sure. And be like, this is performance. What and they're being I'm not, clear. I'm not. I'm not a sorcerer. Yeah, because being a sorcerer will get you burnt at a stake in but a lot I'd of places. I still think even if you do the whole "I'm not a sorcerer," it's just still a risk. It's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still, <laughs> and that might be why they're so like on the periphery and traveling and marginalized. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't want to stay too long somewhere where they can piss someone off, and yeah, they're like, "Oh, you're moving. an evil magician." Or like, yeah, keep moving around, and you don't really know yeah. where they are and all this kind of stuff. And you'll see a lot of these kind of things in a lot of like uh, fiction you know like medieval fantasy because it's quite like a romantic lifestyle in it yeah in fit, like traveling around town but to town I bet in the it's medieval that classic period thing where it sounds great but it was actually absolute shit. awful <laughs> yeah just absolute dog shit yeah yeah like we eat badly now on the road but imagine yeah, yeah, that yeah. <laughs> no service stations yeah just roadkill <laughs> <laughs> oh you might get free if you can hunt you might get some fresh <laughs> some fresh stuff yeah. but they're um i i actually when i was when i was looking at them i was like oh is this like are these like the first stand-up comedians basically mad because th they are like i say they're storytelling they're doing jokes they're doing crowd work 
Like they're basically doing a set and was this, with magic was and this Europe juggling. again. Yeah, Europe right. again. Oh, like England, Europe. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, and it's, I just think it's really cool. It's that it's a really cool period. I wonder cool what period. drove those people to do it. Like, like was it that they they just ended up falling into this weird part of society mm. i wonder if it's was like, it a vocation was it like I think a passion so. like of wanting to yeah. to do something that had never been done before and yeah it's interesting isn't it? i wonder if they don't have a choice a lot of them yeah imagine a lot of them are born into it past a certain point like your and, parents and, are in in it and you're you yeah. grow up in it and you just do or is it like a it. fagan from oliver twist type of thing where someone feeds yeah. you and clothes you in exchange for you to go out there yeah maybe it's like outcasts and they pick people up as they go around yeah. towns and stuff the thing is you can speculate a lot because we don't have a lot of records of these mm -hmm. because they're obviously not writing books and that yeah because they can't read or write probably. and they're not they're not kings and whatever you yeah. know like they're like the royal courts aren't really writing about them too much because they're yeah. not that bothered about them so the records and a lot of the times sparse. when they died they wouldn't have got any exactly yeah they're not yeah registered. Yeah. that's the problem when you're looking at kind of like fringes of society it's a shame isn't it because i bet there were all kinds of like oh, the craziest so people and yeah. stories like, oh they'd be the f most fun people they'd be much more interesting than like the kings and queens because some of them i think anyone who's a star of any kind of movement there's got to be some characters there that are just like geniuses or just yeah. complete like, yeah, well ahead of their time. And You've stuff. got to be like mad, but yeah. but really smart as well. Yeah. We like, yeah, you got to have both. <laughs> and just the courage of your convictions and stuff like, yeah, you know, people don't even like performing now, the imposter syndrome, but to be doing it then, it's just like. That's what blows my mind with this stuff back then is like, there's no safety net. No. You're just going town no to town. No one's ever done it before in a while. So you can't even go. Like I'd, if I, you know, with comedy, if I couldn't look back on all the people who've like had success, I'd have quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just hoping you're one of those people, but to not have that. Yeah. 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 It Crazy. Is, it is like, and it's such a brutal world as well that they're living in. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I yeah, I can't even imagine what, so it's just like next level yeah. so what's that like late medieval yeah so you're talking through like i mean it's they're, they're there hundreds of years the whole medieval kind of period yeah. through to the renaissance so you're talking like up until the plague and stuff and all that you know like it's yeah. crazy crazy and times. even before the plague it was proper toil like yeah it's so annoying that we don't have like if they were keeping records of stuff, it'd be so because they're traveling around yeah, as well. Yeah, so they could so, see the whole and they com they would have been able to like compare all different places, places and all that, which a lot of people won't be able to do. Yeah, like, it's it's so annoying that we don't have like records from people like that. Yeah, because their is... perspective would be like so much better than just some you know yeah. monk in a library. Somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So accurate first of all, but also they're probably more like they're probably more neutral as well because they're outcasts and they're just like not. They've probably got less of an agenda, do you yeah, know what I mean? They just tell it exactly, how it is about everyone. Exactly, yeah, because they're not staying in one place. And they've not, they're not they've not like got a corner to... Because so much of the literature and stuff is controlled by the church at this time. Yeah. So obviously everything they write is trying to make the church look good and right. Yeah. Whereas these guys probably don't give a shit. They're just trolling around, just whatever, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, do you think the church like destroyed like documents and stuff? From yeah, they did. Area? Yeah, to paint, not even... To paint history in the way yeah, they wanted not even, it to look. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say, like, it's not really, like, questionable. They destroyed a lot of stuff, yeah, that they didn't like. magic kind of, particularly then, is kind of an issue for the church because it shows that people can make, it proves that you can make something look one way that yeah. looks something, that is something completely different. Yeah, that's a big thing. Also, like, a lot of, like, the old pagan religions have a lot of, like, magic kind of, you know, rituals and stuff. So they, they don't, that's that's probably the main reason they don't like it mm -hmm. is they think it's like paganism. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Even though like, as we've already discussed, Jesus was, was a magician. Yeah. Like their main guy was doing, doing yeah. magic. <laughs> and then I kind of mentioned it there after the black death, we come into something called the Renaissance, mm -hmm. which starts in Italy mm -hmm. and it spreads around Europe. And we've talked about it on the podcast before. It's basically a switch into like things like humanism and like rationalism and they're kind of moving away from just like the church tells you everything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like you work so stuff out. So is humanism a bit like just like your interpretation of the world without religion, essentially? Oh, like it's about the individual and like individual learning. Like you shouldn't sure. just believe everything that you're sure. told and you should read stuff yourself and learn about kind it. Of, well, that's how we, pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much everyone, even people who are religious, approach life these days. Yeah. It? So like modern academia comes from 
the Renaissance and the Enlightenment and stuff. Okay. That's kind of how we think now. So this comes affects from this. magic massively. It affects it? magic massively yeah. because um, it becomes less mystic. Yeah. Now it's like... Basically, they do, a lot of like modern magic tricks comes from come from this time, mm -hmm. from the Renaissance, which starts in the 1300s through to the Enlightenment, through to like the 1700s, and that's when we get things like more like sleight of hand tricks and mm -hmm. kind of things like that. And books as well, uh, I guess. Yeah, we get books written on tricks. So and the stuff. print the printing press is invented in the 1400s. Okay, and then. Because we've not so far had anyone record of how to do any yeah. tricks. Have so we? this is when we get the first, almost like a manual on how yeah. to do magic tricks. Sick. And it's kind of by accident. I think I've heard of. So this. it's in 1584. Yeah. Um. So it's like Tudor. Yeah. Period. Um. During the reign of Elizabeth the first, I think. Um. Definitely not Elizabeth the second, because that was. Uh, she only died a few couple of years ago. Uh, oh, was that her, was it? Yeah, yeah. I've already, I've already forgotten her. <laughs> so this is Elizabeth the first. Oh, gone too soon. Uh, so it's called The Discovery of Witchcraft, and it's by this guy called Reginald Scott. Yeah. And it's, so he's not trying to write a manual on magic. Mm -hmm. He's basically trying to debunk witchcraft as a thing. Okay. He's basically trying to say witchcraft isn't, isn't real. And the way he does that is by writing this book. And in the book, he outlines how you can make stuff look like it's magic but it isn't you're wow. doing a trick so he inadvertently writes the first manual on how to do magic tricks this guy's a good egg i like that yeah I yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so it's so yeah so, so the, yeah he's not trying to make magic he's almost he's trying to say it's not real it's tricks yeah and, you, and yeah. you're all you're all idiots to think it's real yeah and he's like this is how you do it yeah um, but then people read it and they're like wonder how That's he pretty found cool, out though you know he yeah, just worked it out yeah he must have yeah, it's it's a bit boring to me that someone would work out how to do magic and not be a magician. But I guess it's just coming <laughs> for that reverse way. I can't remember his name, and I'm absolutely kicking myself. But there's a guy, um, he's really famous. Uh, there was a few documentaries about him. Ran, I want to say ran anyway. Uh, he was a magician, and then he. This is fairly recently. I think he died not too long ago. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. His name's like James Randall something. Uh, right. I think, uh, but he went around like following mentalists like Yora Geller and loads of others yeah, and yeah, proving yeah. that they were doing tricks. Yeah. So I wonder if this, it sounds pretty similar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny that you would dedicate time to that though. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> no, but you say that, but the, a lot of these people had loads of followers and people are idiots. Yeah, I guess. You know, he's like going cold. to religious people mm. who were like, making people think their relatives had come back from like the cold dead. reading yeah. yeah that is a big problem people think that's real people don't they a lot do. of people and do then, think that's real you know that he would he, he would follow them around and he also had a show where i think if you could do one of if you could do a supernatural trick in his conditions in his studio he'd give them a million pounds yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. No a million dollars but um darren brown did a really good one yeah like that where he did like cold reading and he said to everyone, he's like, look, this is not real. Yeah, I've seen that. I'm doing cold reading. And then he just does it. And, and then like, they were like, that can't not be real. <laughs> yeah, but it makes you... Because he yeah. was like so good at it. They're like, that has to be yeah, real. Yeah, <laughs> it almost makes you think like, well, you've said it's not real. So now I think it's real. <laughs> yeah, you try, you you are doing it. You're trying to cover your tracks. So this is when uh, the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, which is a big period of history, but this is when coin tricks come about. That guy's called James Randy. James Randy. Yeah, cool. yeah. Sorry. So yeah, so this is when you get coin tricks. Uh, yes. Which are obviously a big part of magic. Yes. And then obviously a massive part of magic. This is when you get card tricks. Yes. Um, so this is, this is, I th Renaissance slash Enlightenment is when we get like, this is modern magic coming. So I'm interested in to know how long the, if you know, like how long were the playing cards invented and how long did it take people to start using them for magic? So know? I don't know exactly when they were invented, but they were invented they were around for quite a long time before they were start, oh, starting really? to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were, it, it wasn't like they were invented and then people started doing magic with them. Like it's, it's a while okay. before so people started So I guess playing cards them. would have been big, but I do think magic really like meant that playing cards c can be used for so much more than just a game. Yeah. And because cards how many... are, a, uh, are an instrument we'd use, can't think of an example, but if you wanted to randomize anything yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or you know, all of that kind of stuff, I think all of that comes from magic, yeah. but I might be wrong. I wonder how many, um, 
how many cards get sold for magic and versus to play with <laughs> i reckon world. i reckon more for magic yeah. because magicians i'm not a magician anymore i stopped when i was 18 i was never a good one but you would order like you get through so many packs of cards yeah you get special ones that are, yeah you get gimmick ones like so, but also like certain brands that magic yeah. magic people like as well yeah yeah, yeah yeah exactly because they're like better to yeah, handle or yeah whatever. exactly yeah uh, I had some David Blaine ones that you could read the back of them. Oh, nice! I, like from that, the from the signs on there was like symbols yeah, on the back that told you what card I had a it pack was. Of cards like that. And yeah. I was like, oh, I could play poker with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't now because I've said it on the uh, on the podcast. People. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will know I'm cheating now. I think they would probably know anyway. Like, why is Callan examining the back of every? <laughs> yeah, why is he like trying to Can look, look through at the back of your card? No, card. you can't. <laughs> why are we using these weird yeah. cards? So, like, I had a cool one as well where it's like one of the cards is like slightly bigger yeah on the edge i think and you can like so you put it you take it off then you put it in the pack upside down and then you can like lift it out yeah it that's, that card that's out. got a name and i can't remember yeah it. that was a cool that's trick. a good one really yeah, some of those well. trick decks are, <laughs> uh, are really good yeah they, they yeah. just the trick just does them themselves yeah and there's one where yeah you take you give them they choose any card and then they take the card and then you can basically you just cut they put it anywhere in the deck Mm. This might be the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you just cut to it. You just pick. No, no, that's not the you one. pick up yeah, will yeah. bring, reveal the card because of the way the deck oh, is. Oh, maybe. I think you can use it for that. Yeah. So basically what it is, one of the corners yeah. of the card, basically the one side of the card, the corners are yeah, slightly long wider. Short. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can go like that and like lift it out Got from you, the wider yeah. corners, but you yeah. could probably cut it as well like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, one yeah, the same yeah. one. yeah. Um, the other thing with this as well, so the Enlightenment, it's all about science and advancement of science, and that's magic shifts. And remember I was telling you about how, like, magic kind of reflects the society that it's in and tells you about what they're like, oh, not yeah. just what magic's like. So we've seen that in the ancient world where it's like all mysticism and stuff, and they really believe it's magic. Rome is this kind of almost it almost feels like like a hustle society where everyone's like hustling to get by and you get the uh, cup and ball tricks coming about yeah. the medieval period you get every they think it's evil because yeah. they're like really christian and yeah. like they're scared of witchcraft yeah. and stuff and then in the renaissance and the enlightenment especially the enlightenment you start getting people doing magic but they're saying they're tell they're presenting it as like these are science experiments science. I've worked this out through science. This is physics, but it's a magic trick. So but they're saying it's because I've like manipulated the, the atoms or whatever they're saying. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I think it was in this period where a guy like, was it at a Polytechnic in London? But uh, I think it was around here. Maybe I'm completely wrong. When would Polytechnics be in? You know, universities. Like, but more this, I remember watching it said that at this time a polytechnic was essentially, wasn't quite a university. It was used more to be just like a trade place people places. would come to exchange ideas and, okay. and meet people who were kind okay. of academic. So he came with this new trick, but he wasn't a magician, but he's presented it as science. Yeah. And it was basically he brought a ghost to life on the stage using like light and a mirror. Yeah. But as he was about to reveal like how it was done, because that's why he was doing it, yeah, was because yeah, yeah. he was science to him. Yeah. When, I think this is so cool. Like when the ghost disappeared, the audience reaction was so gasped and applauded he thought i can't tell them yeah yeah and yeah, he decided not to it. tell them so yeah. he like because so he was like it the joy is them not knowing so i came across i think i came across that trick yeah i think that's from the what's comes after this the golden age of magic okay. which is where it's in big theaters and stuff yeah this, yeah it's okay. kind of like i guess the only modern ones like that is like you know like the darren brown theater shows that he does yeah he's kind of like re, he's trying to recreate the vibe yeah of those and that trick I did come across. So it's from like, basically there's like a mirror. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how they do it, but there's like a mirror under stage. There's someone dressed as a ghost or whatever. Yeah. They're reflected in this mirror and then it reflects up into like a pane of glass yes. or something. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So it creates like a hologram. Yeah. yeah. So I did come across that. And, and I also came across, that's how, you know, they did like the two pack hologram at Coachella. Oh yeah, that's how they did it. They use did that the, they used that magic that's trick. That's absolutely bonkers. Yeah. It's probably more advanced. They use like you know yeah, video. Yeah, but it was but, basically but it's the same it's the science, principle. Right? Yeah, yeah, the principle is the same of how yeah, they did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but it's then still the guy happening. who did that did because sorry, I'm probably skipping for no, 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 golden go for age. It. But it the guy who did that, I think, then also, I don't know if he was inventing this stuff or if he was just acquiring it from someone. Yeah, yeah. But he then kind of 
bought like a, uh, like a vanishing cabinet, which was like the first one of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. that's where why for ages we saw cabinets. Yeah, it's crazy that so long could go by and that people are still using that. You know. Yeah, 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 and and also like that idea of the science stuff that comes about in the Enlightenment. Yeah, that does carry on through the Golden Age okay. as, as well. Yeah. So there's a really cool film. I always get the two films mixed up. There's one with Edward Norton. That's the illusionist, right? Yes. And then there's one the with Hugh Jackman. Is it Hugh Jackman? And it? Uh, and uh, Christian Bale. Yes, that's yeah, prestige. that's the prestige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that follows. That film kind of has that in it. You know, the science. Yes, where they're like, this it is does. science. It does. Yeah. yeah. But like one of them's kind of doing the old, old school thing of like, it's mystical. Yeah. And then the other one's doing the kind of, this is a science thing. Yeah. Um, and you can see the two kind of forms. Yeah. Of it. Do you know what period the prestige was meant to cover? I can't remember. I want to say it's like early 1800s, maybe. Maybe it feels late. like golden. Age. It feels like 1800s. Yeah. Um, just try, I'm trying to remember like what they were wearing and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Where, but I think that kind of that theater stuff is golden age. So I imagine it is 1800s. Yeah. They were very much there when you first meet the characters, they were that kind of grifter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's yeah. grassroots. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. dangerous. It's, they're, they're good. Both good films. Um, I rec yeah. recommend them. I'll link I, them. So I, people I really can, like them. Um, what I'll do is if people want, I send out all the, like references to all that nice. stuff so they can sign up and get all that but yeah prestige is is really cool and i think it looks like it's made the people who made it did some research and stuff Definitely. into the magic and Definitely. The, kind of, the kind of stuff yeah yeah um, yeah because there's loads of tricks in it that are like known as iconic pieces of like, yes you know, yeah like and the, the one with uh, like the bullet catch the, the you, yes the yeah bullet catch. i knew you were gonna uh, yeah, 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 yeah i knew yeah. the bullet catch is yeah. gonna come up um but even in the illusionist as well with edward norton yeah there's a trick in that where um, they, he makes like a tree, orange tree grow. Yes, in front of everyone's that, eyes. That's one. Of, that was. And that's a real trick. Yeah, that's the French. Uh, Houdin, I Houdin. Think. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the first trick. That's he one ever of his did. tricks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in the film, they obviously use CGI. Yeah. To make it look because they were, you know angles and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, that's a real trick that they've they've copied, which is it's crazy. Is really cool. That but he done was. That. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you wanted to talk about him later, but he was like. That who Dan was like, he incorporated clockwork. He was a, is it a clockwork? What would you call a clock worker? I don't know. Uh, he did a lot of clockwork I know stuff. What you mean. He was yeah, like yeah, an yeah. engineer. Makes clock clocks. Yeah. <laughs> but back in the day, uh, <laughs> to use the exact period, uh, <laughs> like clockwork. That's an, actual, that's an actual period. Clockwork was like CGI because yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff was appearing, like, and these trees were f turning into oranges because of all this elaborate. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're, cogs we're, we're, and stuff. we're skipping around a bit now, which yeah, is fine. Yeah, we are. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. But um, the invention of film is quite a big thing as well because they start using um, like jump cuts. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a bit like cheating, isn't it? So they'll like, yeah, they'll have it where he's like there, and then they'll do a jump cut in the film, and he appears somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. because film's so new, people don't really understand like editing. Well, even like people just think what you're looking at on the screen is exactly what's happened. So when you do a jump cut and he's like moved from there to there, you're like oh my god, he, he like transported. Even or whatever. thirty years ago, jump cuts used to trick people online. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. yeah. So it's not surprising. Yeah. The, um, I mean, there's probably people who still are tricked. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> I mean, every stand-up special has that. Because a lot of big specials, you record three, don't you? Yeah. Or whatever. And then you cut them together to look like it's a single it's, performance. Yeah. It's the same thing, really. But yeah. you're not. You, but you don't want them, like, you're trying to hide. Yeah, cut. you don't want them to think, how did he get there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why is he on the other side of the stage? Yeah, he was yeah. just there. Like, but like back then, they're doing it to be... Yeah. But it's the same principle. Why was like that trickery. stain not on his trousers before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why you never have like a glass of water like this in, it, in a special where yeah. you can see how much is in it because you could just jump to like an empty glass exactly. from a full glass. But... But yeah, this that's the the golden age. I think we won't go too much into the golden age because we don't have a lot of time. And yeah. I feel like this could be a podcast in itself. Yeah, yeah. Because you've got, that's where you've got like, you know, Harry Houdini and yeah. all this kind of stuff. And maybe if you come back on in the future, we'll do the golden, we we'll just, the just golden do the golden age. age. Yeah, because so that's it, when there's, there's names that would probably ring people bells yeah, and a and lot of things that people have heard of culturally. I don't think, I don't think we'll do it justice because we'll, you know, yeah, just to go yeah, 15 yeah, minutes yeah, just yeah. On, the go on the golden age. But and we'll talk a lot a bit. still to explore on. Yeah, but I'll, 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 I'll tell you a bit because it'd be stupid to just kind of yeah. not mention it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, it's basically you get Harry Houdini, of course. Another one called Howard Thurston. 
So uh, Houdini is the one that everyone knows. Thurston is, I think he's like a legend within mm -hmm. certain circles. So Houdini does escape, escapists so, and all see, that kind yeah, of stuff. I, I think he was a magician, wasn't he? But I consider Houdini in my head a lot more of an escapologist. I think that's what he's which is a, famous a, for. Kind of a very similar sort of principle, but yeah. it's a different thing different because thing. you're not actually trying... Like obviously magicians are saying, uh, they're almost saying, I'm I'm going to lie to you. They're telling you they're going to lie to you. And yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah. It. Well, I think escapologist is a bit more like trying to claim like you are actually doing something, yeah. which you probably are. And the lines are blurred as to when it's a trick yeah, or when yeah, it's yeah. not. And that's where kind of David Blaine went into, isn't yeah. it? With like, I'm going to be in, frozen in ice and I stuff like that. Blaine was massively inspired by Houdini yeah. in the sense, and the, uh, because I think I might be wrong, but as the older Houdini got, the more he wanted to do stunts. He actually wanted to do the things. Yeah, he didn't yeah, just yeah. want to do the tricks. And so. I remember that with. Do you know how he you died? When? Do you know how Houdini, Houdini died? Was he doing a trick? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he what got. Happened? This is what. I'm, this might be wrong, but my pretty sure understanding is that he got a student out on the street. Yeah, he wanted to prove he could take any punch. So he punched him really hard in the stomach and it fucked up all his organs and he died. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, so that wasn't a trick. No, that was a stun. <laughs> just got punched. He just took the punch and Jeez. died. Because I imagine then you could get like a slight internal problem and it's game over. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. get internal broken bleeding rib, or a broken rib. rib. Yeah. yeah. That's bad, that. But I think Blaine wants to die like that. Like, yeah. he, 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 some of his things he's doing uh, and nuts yeah the ice one i remember at the time i was like is this a trick <laughs> do you know what i mean like i remember thinking is this a trick or is he just doing that isn't he in london like sat in a big glass box with yeah, a nappy yeah, on? yeah yeah that's not yeah. a trick the that's moment trick. you have to wear a nappy yeah. it's no longer an illusion <laughs> <laughs> if you have to shit yourself to yeah, do a magic yeah, yeah, trick yeah, i'm yeah, not yeah, into yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless maybe the, he takes the nappy off at the end and there's no shit in it <laughs> that'd be really good <laughs> that's the trick <laughs> and now for the prestige <laughs> <laughs> that'd be good <laughs> that's a trick <laughs> That comes from the Roman. You've heard that phrase, the prestige. That's a ah. Roman phrase, by the way. That's from the old the uh, the guys who we were talking about earlier, and it basically means the cherry um, on the. I think no. So what it means in the Roman world is basically like you're lying. I think it's like you're lying or tricking people. Like you're kind of ah. Yeah. I always thought it meant like one last big thing. That's what it means now. Yeah, that's what yeah, it became. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah. You. But it became. A, it like well, that's like how a lot of language works. Is like it means something and then it people gets associated it with something and then it kind of changes because over of magic. Time. It got used and then exactly, became yeah. cool. Yeah. Right. So I, th I don't know if it was like an insult in the Roman world of like they're liars, they're tricksters, or if it was just a kind of casual way to say it. Sounds like a nice word though, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's actually a different word in Latin. I can't okay. remember the exact word. But I presumed but it's like, it sounds similar. It's some, it'll be something like prestige or, you know, something like that. Prestige. It's like yeah. Because um, prestige also means now like good. and Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's changed completely, like yeah. the meaning of the word. Uh, which is the case. That's why you have to be careful with uh, when you see like words in other languages that look similar yeah. to English words. They're not always the same. Yeah, because they could have just gone. They yeah, yeah, they could have just changed. They might even have the same origin, but yeah, they've like, become gone different, completely. different things. So, and this is where like, obviously after the golden age, or kind of you get basically modern magic. This is the transition into what we think of magicians. And you start to get like state, big stage magic, you know, like Copperfield and all that later on. But they're very much, they can't do that without the likes of Houdini and, you know, Thurston. Yeah. Oh, that's what I forgot to mention. Yeah, so Houdini is like this escapologist. Uh, Thurston, Howard Thurston, the reason he's so famous, he's doing like stage magic and stuff at the same time. So he's doing more like what you probably think of as like, you know. Rather than escaping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing like magic shows. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's when we come into like the kind of like the big stage, you know, Vegas shows and all that. They're kind of built on the back of them. And then interestingly, now there was this kind of like flip back, almost like to the origins of magic, where we went through a period where the most popular magic was street magic. Yeah. With like, you know, David Blaine. Dynamo. And, and Dynamo. And there was more. There was a, about 10 years ago, there was another... I feel like every channel had their own street yeah, magician. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the other yeah. guys' names. And it's really cool because it's if you don't know anything about the history of magic, you think, oh, that's a new thing that they're doing. But that's actually going back to the like the 
the origins of it. That's going back to those Roman guys yeah. doing the cup and balls on the street. And with, with everyday objects and coins yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Before you had big boxes and cannons and yeah, all of yeah, that. Yeah, which goes back. So yeah, and the coins and sleight of hand, that goes back to the Renaissance and even the medieval stuff earlier. Yeah. So it's so they've they've almost taken it back to its roots. Well, I think magic from the bit of the time I kind of like learned about it when I was doing it, I think it's, it, it is... And this is kind of why I chose it as my topic is I think history is just so important in magic. Every trick you learn, like you find out that the first version of this trick was written in X book all yeah, this yeah, time yeah. ago. Like in stand up, we stand on, you know, we're much like we stand on the shoulders of giants, like all of the people before us yeah, who yeah, were yeah. great have inspired us. But in magic, that's tenfold yeah 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 you know like every i think yeah it's so about looking and adapting and becoming better and yeah. using all of that research that's yeah. been done and all of those books and 100 percent. yeah yeah i think it's so cool as well that the same a lot of the same tricks are around the cup and balls is that is amazing that it's like yeah they're, they're doing it on the streets of like ancient rome two thousand years ago yeah and if you go out in london now you'll, you'll see still, someone you'll in still, Covent you'll still see people trick. doing cup and balls yeah, with the yeah, same yeah, trick yeah 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 like yeah that is really cool yeah that, that and they consistent. might be doing different methods and all that kind yeah. of stuff but the, the and the, it, it's got to be more than just because be, because it's been done before it's it's got to be something to do with that in magic that people like to nod their head and do things yeah, to old yeah, stuff yeah yeah. There's some, there is sort yeah. of a nostalgia in magic yeah, and I can't yeah, quite yeah, explain yeah, yeah. what it well, is. This is why I said, even, you know, we went back to the ancient Egypt stuff. Mm. Even though I don't think they're doing like trick magic that we think of. Yeah. It is important even for trick magic because that's, I think that's why yes. people are so interested in it. Yes. Even though we know it's fake. Yes. Like we like the idea that they're that it's like sauce ancient sorcery or yes. it's the way that people watch like professional wrestling and they know it's fake but they like the idea that they're fighting yeah do you know what i mean even though they know they're not really fighting yeah we, they like the idea that these guys are actually smacking each other with, yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah and yeah, it's the same yeah, with like yeah, magic that is it yeah with it's magic trick. like we know it's a trick but we like the idea of like a magician and a sorcerer into thinking yeah because it's so ingrained in the culture like it back is. to ancient egypt and thousands of years well, and all when this you, when we were saying that those things in ancient Egypt that they were removing animals' heads and I instantly go, that's a trick. But it's almost quite possible that the even if it wasn't, that the first magic trick of that was because of that writing about yeah. that. Yeah. Like magicians often try and recreate things from that that were myths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, you know, hundred like, percent. And I imagine someone's done like water to wine as a magic anything. trick and things like that. Well, the, the, I remember. The, isn't there a rule with porn? Like, if you can think of it, it exists. I think the same is with like <laughs> yeah, yeah, with yeah. like magic. With like, a magic if trick. you can think of a yeah. a thing that would be impossible, it's probably been done. But like, if you, th I remember that uh, Dynamo walking on the Thames. Yeah, it's like Jesus walking on water. Isn't yeah, it? it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's doing something that we're all kind of we've heard of or that like, yeah. we all kind of know exists. And that's that's why I I was interested in. I never really did it. I did a few like did you? tricks there and there, yeah. but I never really like to, did it serious. But I was always interested in it. I think a yeah. lot of comedians are. Yeah, for, like, I don't know why it is, but I've, I've, what, I noticed like a lot of comedians were interested in magic. One hundred percent when they were kids and stuff. Well, firstly, you can't do stand up when you're a kid. Yeah, but you can for some reason. Kids can do magic. Yeah, an adult will watch a kid do magic and, <laughs> and actually take him seriously. Yeah, 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 and be like, "Wow, how'd you do that?" Yeah. So I think to get people's attention, like, yeah, and I think comedians are. There's something in a lot of us where it's like we like to do something that no one else can do. Yeah, yeah. Or we like to <laughs> think true. we could do something that no one else can do. And yeah, yeah, yeah. As a kid, like magic is the best way to do yeah. that. Yeah. I think a lot of us are just attention seekers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say is yeah, that we're just, attention seekers yeah. desperate for any form of validation. And if that involves having to shuffle a deck of cards for three weeks to do one trick. I like, liked how it was kind of like you didn't, it was you didn't need a lot as well like which is like comedy in it you just need a mic but like yeah. with magic you just need a deck of cards yeah or yeah. not even just a coin or something you, yeah you can do yeah something. yeah yeah i mean obviously you can thing. like to get easier tricks and stuff but if you're prepared to put in the effort like you literally can learn like a hundred tricks with one deck of cards yeah, yeah yeah you just need time and energy yeah. yeah and also like yeah like we talked about how much of like they're kind of like on the periphery of society like you do feel a bit like that as a comedian because you yeah get up late and stuff yeah yeah, like, yeah i don't like this idea of we're like these kind of like you know fucking mavericks or anything which i don't think no, we are we're not. but we are kind of we're not in 
in the grind, are we? No. <laughs> we're getting, no. We, we can get up at noon if we want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People always apart. talk about that, don't they? Like, oh, I'm grinding this week. I've had six gigs. It's like, well, yeah, but... That was probably 10, min- 10, 20 minutes on stage each time. You, I, I, someone said to me, I work really hard. And I was like, look, mate, my bed is currently unmade. And I got up at 4 p.m. Like, I know what I am. Working hard like, for a comedian is like yeah. someone else having a part-time job. Yeah, 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 exactly. If you treat, if you treat comedy like a part-time job, other, oh comedi- other comedians think you They'll work hard. they blow people's minds. What, you do three hours of work a day. <laughs> and a gig. <laughs> Not even joking. If you do three hours of work That's a day. That's a lot. Oh, that I Never, like, I, that's why I, 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 yeah. I would be buzzing if I was doing that. That you is would, not me saying I do that much. You work. might be the hardest working yeah, comedian. Yeah, three in hours the of work. Whoa. <laughs> but those people are often not that funny. <laughs> that's it. That is the problem. There will be plenty of people who do three hours of work, and they they'll fail as they're well. Not fun, they're not very funny. No. Like, I sit down and I write for two hours every day, and it's yeah. like, yeah, but you write shite. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, that's great that you're doing that and we should all be aiming to do that, but you shouldn't find that that easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know about you, but like I come up with stuff when I'm just walking yeah. to the shop or somewhere. I never sit down and come up with ideas. No, I do think, I don't, but I do think when I do try and do that, I don't get anything from it, but it makes me come up with more ideas Yeah, when I'm not trying not to do it. Yeah. So I still think there's a benefit for me anyway in trying to yeah, do yeah, the, yeah. the normal way, which never works. No, never works. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I honestly, like, I cannot, I could not sit down and write a bit. No one tells you that, though, when you start. Everyone just pretends like everyone has this perfect process yeah. of writing. Everyone buys a notebook. Then you start to realise that loads of good people are like, yeah, I, I don't know how to write. They just kind of come to me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to do it for ages. I like, tried to write down bits come up with bits by writing i just never i always i just talk to myself now yeah that's, that's good it. that's how i come up with it yeah um but anyway yeah right <laughs> yeah <coughs> we went from so the history kind of, of magic yeah, to the yeah, present yeah. of comedy another comedian thing is we just we talk we, we find a way to make it about yeah, ourselves yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could be literally it. anything and we'll find a way to make it about ourselves yeah exactly <laughs> it's kind of in the job description that's the only it? way i work three hours a day is just talking about comedy unsolicitedly <laughs> with my housemates i'm working <laughs> i did my, my other half when we like go places she's like don't talk about comedy yeah really yeah but then people want to talk about it when yeah, they find you're out like, you're a comedian mm, no it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah, yeah and then you seem rude because you're like trying to change the subject like oh, i don't want to talk about it <laughs> yeah so now i'll just talk about it <laughs> it's hard to talk about it though with people who don't do it and not seem like a knob i always think yeah, like, they all, you, you've never got the answers that people want yeah like. people always <laughs> over like they always make it sound like better than it is as well they're like oh that's so amazing it's like is it no is yeah. it <laughs> or do i just am i just am i a clown yeah <laughs> basically i'm a jester <laughs> um so yeah we've gone through the whole the whole history it's quite cool that we've done that as well because i feel like we've not just covered magic we've covered like those time periods yeah. in a way as well and you are dead right that it that the way the the, the thing yeah it's interesting the and way that's the that case they interpret with, the uh, magic yeah it's how you'd expect right? yeah and that's the case with everything as well like not just magic i'll say this to people who are actually interested in history is we're like try not to look at stuff in isolation and try to be like when you when you're looking at a certain topic like you have to understand the world it's in, if that makes sense, to understand what people are saying. And it's like, you know, they teach you in high school, don't they, when you learn history about like biased sources. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what it means is like when, you know, Christians in the 800s are writing about magic, they're going to write about it very differently than someone yeah. in the 1800s during the golden age the, of magic the, is yeah, going to write exactly. about They're going to get it wrong, right? Because yeah, yeah, of yeah. all of the contextual things you yeah. know. Yeah, and it can work both ways. So they might get it wrong in the Middle Ages because they're scared of it and they think it's evil. But then in the golden age, they might get it wrong because they love it so much. Yeah. And they're trying to big it up too they're much. They're not seeing... That they're not seeing the flaws. Yeah. Or, well, I don't know exactly, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like that kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it, can exactly. work, it can work both ways as well. It's not always negative. Like That's people can like stuff though. too much. Yeah. Like when I talk about football, when I talk about my team, mm-hmm. like I'm very 
I, I, you know what I mean? I probably think the players that I like are better than they are. Yeah. And the ones that I don't like for whatever reason, yeah. I probably always, when I look if at them, were, I'm like, oh if, shit. If you were going to write that down where your team's at and put them in a team a time capsule, you would just be completely biased. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 100%. It, you would need to be able to understand that data correctly. You would need to understand where you were at and yeah. what your view of your, yeah. You, yeah. And it makes it a lot more interesting as well, just to look at, when you look at stuff from history, if you kind of understand why, people are thinking about it the way they are and mm. stuff and they often don't teach you that in school and stuff like they don't look they don't do it in school like they just teach you dates don't they and stuff yeah like they that. just want and, you to write an essay like yeah and yeah, just yeah. Be able to reference the dates and yeah stuff. it's bad though because then you go to university and get to like masters and that and they're like no you need to actually understand everything <laughs> yeah and i'm sure you end up just misinterpreting a lot of history at school like i've said a lot of things that are just an easy way that they taught us things and people yeah. really have to explain to you like no that isn't that yeah. isn't actually what happened. That's just a neat way of, yeah, a neat, yeah, yeah. easy way of, of a child understanding that and that it will work in an essay. Yeah, the big thing is like, the ha we'll, we'll wrap up soon, by the way. Yeah. But the big thing is like, people don't understand. It's like when you, go, the higher up you go in like academia, when it comes to like history and archaeology, the less it matters that you know, like dates and that you know the names of it. It's more about understanding like why stuff happens and like mm. understanding what motivated societies and why they change and do you know what i mean like yeah. it's, it's not just about because people often think knowing about history is like i know the date this happened and i know the name of this king and this yeah. emperor but you could not really know that stuff but still understand that society better than someone who's memorized everything yeah, 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 yeah. and that's why it's cool to talk about it like this when we're talking about magic because we're talking about how they're how they're perceiving something. Mm -hmm. So even though we haven't gone into like dates and all that, I think this will make you understand them more than if we just went through it in like a kind of timeline of yeah, what happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, so it's really cool. I'm glad you did it. So we do different, like some of them are really specific. This one's a bit broader. Quite general, yeah. Yeah, but it's nice to do both as well. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. So yeah, thanks for- that's been great. Thanks for picking it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, but I'm sure I'll have you back on, hopefully. Yeah, we could do the golden um, age. We could focus on, we could even focus in on like one like person that you're interested in from the golden age or something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Whatever, whatever you want to do but for now we'll call it an end so thank you for listening thanks for watching if you're watching and we are gonna stop do you want to say bye before we go uh bye <laughs>